Hiya, Freddy. W9EOB calling. Saying hello and sending Christmas greetings to both you and Eleanor. You know, it's about time I wrote you a letter. And now that I have a recording machine, well, I guess this is about the simplest way to do it. Just to quote a line from your September 5th letter, uh, it's been too darn long since I've written you. But I never was a very good correspondent. Well, I guess that goes for me, too. It's been about six months since I last wrote you. You're probably wondering how it happens that I'm talking to you through a Victrola, so here's the story. The kid brother saw one of these recording machines at a friend's house, and he went nutty over the idea of making records. You know, record for posterity the voices of all your friends and that sort of stuff. With the net result that I chipped in and we bought a portable recorder. And just in case you aren't playing this record on one such machine, I'll describe it to you. It's a snappy-looking, lightweight, portable phonograph with a rim-driven turntable, and it's equipped with two crystal heads, a heavy recording head, and a lightweight playback head. It comes complete with an ecstatic crystal hand mic and makes up to 10-inch records on smooth varnished or acetate disc with immediate playback. The records are darn cheap if you buy seconds, a nickel apiece. That is, the seconds that are uh, 8-inch cardboard disc with a little varnish thrown on them. If you use those, you can't spend more than 30 cents an hour making records even if you try. And talk about fun. I've taken this rig to three or four small parties, and we've ended up making half a dozen records instead of going out for a beer. And believe me, that saves plenty of dough. I figure at this rate, it'll pay for itself in about five or six months. Well, chum, uh, I think I'll take the easy way out on this thing. Instead of trying to recall some of the correspondence I received, what little there is of it, I think I'll read some of it to you. I've had a couple of letters from Albright and uh, Sullivan, but <laughs> they're as bad correspondents as I am. Sully's letter is dated June 24th, and I guess Monroe's comes way last March. Perhaps I told you my last letter something about what Monroe said. Well, to uh, quote Sullivan, he says, My sole radio experiment this year has begun and ended with the purchase of a Skyrider Defiant SX-24, which is pretty good so far. I have in the mill the design and construction of an operating table with a three-sided turret arrangement, and also the design of a super-fidelity audio system, complete with a special deluxe turntable, crystal head with fur-covered ball bearings, <laughs> and an amplifier with all-resistance coupling with variable bass and treble expansion and compression, phase inversion, and 12-watt final 6L6, uh, coupled to a sonograph speaker, which, as far as I can figure out, is the best of the lot. We started something playing around with those records out of the station. I'm so tone-conscious it hurts me to listen to the ordinary RCA or Philco junk pile, which the layman seem to consider so darn hot. Especially, the, especially these uh, $300 jobs with special ultra phonograph, 102 megacycles down the 2KC band switching, deluxe models with garden rake and lawnmower attachment, and the standard RCA boomy bass. I guess they adjust those things at the factory to resonate at about 20 cycles. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess Sully has his worries. Uh, to continue, he says, um, about me, I've been in general engineering department in underground testing, in charge of testing new uh, VG 300 and 500 KVA transformers for a while, and also in the overhead lines department on erection of the 44 KV construction from the dam to the city. I've also been in surveys and layouts for a small town in the neighborhood. Right now, I'm in distribution department in overhead lines section, which is construction and maintenance of overhead lines. However, I'm very disappointed. I'm still an engineer, and I figured I'd be at least a member of the board by now. Anyway, I've learned a lot more since I've been out of school than I did the last two years I were there. I was there. Well, I guess that goes for uh, you and me both, Freddy. Uh, I haven't spent any time in engineering since I got out, except to fiddle a little bit with this radio. I notice you say in your letter that you're in more or less administration work. Well, that's about the same thing I'm in. And, uh... I could say I think that I've forgotten everything but how to wire a doorbell. At least it seems that way. What little fiddling around I've been doing lately. I uh, see we're about the end of this record, so you better turn me over now, and <laughs> if you care to, and see what else there is coming along. Uh, 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 don't go away there, Freddy. I notice in playing that other side back that I have a pretty bad rumble in there. I apparently didn't have these dials set just right. So uh, I think I'll try this very brief test section to see if I've gotten rid of it. Okie doke, you better uh, come on over and move your phonograph head over a quarter of an inch. Well, it seems the difficulty is a combination of three or more variables. For one thing, I'm using an old recording needle that's probably worn to a jagged point. For another thing, I apparently was talking too close to the mic and packing it. 
And in the third place, I can see that I've got too much oil on this record. It's leaving a almost a rotten track here. The uh, wiggles don't look right in the light. Well, speaking about forgetting things at school, I guess we were speaking about that. Uh, a fellow asked me the other day a couple of questions about small AC motors. It seems he had a little induction motor that he took out of a player piano, and uh, he wanted to make a fan out of it. Uh, it seems that I can't even remember the starting torque of an induction motor. I had to go home and get up the book and uh, the, the EE report, you know, from our junior and senior years, and read up a little bit, and then try to act smart. I guess he saw through it, though. As for my radio, well, I've done practically nothing on it since last February. But about a week ago, the old bug bit me again, and uh, I've been working on, in fact, I hope to finish tonight, a frequency meter monitor combination that's, uh, well, it's thrown together out of one of the QSTs in the handbook, and uh, another one, I think, was called uh, Amateur Radio Defense or something like that. Uh, it looks pretty good, but uh, <laughs> the way these wires run all over each other down here, I don't think it's going to work so hot. I'll probably have an awful lot of bugs to take out of it. I've been looking at a book by Frank Jones on cathode modulation as a pretty cheap means of getting back on the air. And of course, I'll have to do it phone now that I have a, uh, a microphone here that came with this recording machine. That sort of appeals to me. As yet, I haven't decided anything definite, but um, I've been thinking very seriously of putting a little dough into it and spending about the next 15 nights just one over the other, you know, getting in and really building the transmitter. I think in perhaps a month or two, I, um, if I work this thing right, I can be on the air. Now, I said that last winter, and I guess I wasn't too serious about it, but uh, I certainly do mean it more this time, and I think if everything works out okay, I will be on the air, and then by golly, we will have a schedule. I hope, I hope, I hope. Well, Freddy, I, uh, I'm not married yet. No, sir. We had a bit of an argument. Well, it wasn't so much an argument as just a uh, disagreement on some general principles. But apparently we're going to get that thing patched up, and uh, maybe by the next time I write you, if I continue to write you or send these records at three months' intervals, maybe I'll be married. Who knows? I guess it works out okay, doesn't it? <laughs> what do you got to say on that? You two happy people down there? Well, Chauncey, I thank you an awful lot for sending down your letter. I really enjoyed it. I hope to hear from you again soon, and uh, I hope that I send you a letter, too, soon. Or not too soon, but I hope you I send you a letter also and send it to you soon. And uh, I also hope I get to work you over the air. I suppose I'll get a little bit fed up with uh, modulation and the difficulties with it and uh, go back on code. I always did seem to make out pretty well with that code. Of course, my code speed is down, too. Don't we, re we degenerate when we get out of school, though? Something awful, isn't it? Well, write me a letter if you get a chance. I wish you both a very happy Christmas, and uh, if you can, why well, you send me a letter before Christmas. Or New Year's, along in there. So long, Freddy, and uh, let me know how you like this recording. I sort of like it myself. And by the way, if you've used more than about an ounce and a half head, well, you probably didn't get much of this. So long, fella. 73s.